Trees are a great addition to any landscape, and for a modest investment, trees will return decades of benefit for just a small amount of work, but that is assuming that you put the proper care into planting and beyond. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the five biggest mistakes to avoid when planting and caring for your trees. You know, in all of horticulture, there is one expression that I have heard more than any other from countless professionals, and that is this, put the right plant in the right place. And when you install a tree or a shrub where it is ideally suited to grow, whether that's full sun or under a tall canopy of trees, you're setting it up for success. Now, on the other hand, if you try to force a tree to grow where it's not ideally suited, you're just asking for trouble. And that information is readily available these days and it usually starts with a plant tag on the tree. Like this one right here, this is a crab apple and the tag tells you it loves full sun and this is full sun. So your first step in proper tree care and planting is to put the right tree or plant in the right place. Trees, just like with all plants, have to be planted properly in order to thrive and survive. And as you already know, that information is readily available, so it's important to do your homework. But for pretty much any tree or plant in your home landscape, the steps to proper planting are pretty straightforward. First, dig your hole two to three times as wide as the root mass, but never deeper than where the tree's roots meet the trunk. That's usually at the point where you'll notice a flare in the trunk. When in doubt, scratch down in the soil of your new tree to find the top roots. That should be your reference point when you place your tree into your new hole. No deeper and slightly higher is better. Trees planted any deeper run the risk of drowning if too much water fails to drain around the roots. Planting this way or slightly higher helps prevent that mistake from happening. When you take the tree out of the container, check the roots to see if they are tightly bound in a circular pattern. If so, and the chances are likely that they will be, you need to break up that circular pattern by cutting or manipulating the roots however you need to in order to break up that pattern. Otherwise, the roots will never venture into their new soil environment. At best, the tree will just sit there and languish, never reaching its full potential. Worst case, and far too often, the tree suffers a slow death. Speaking of soil, when it's time to fill the hole, resist the temptation to include non-native ingredients, such as peat moss, compost, or manure. Well, I can't believe I'm even saying to avoid making the soil better, here's why you don't want to do that with your new planting. If you make the soil immediately around the roots so much better than the native soil, according to research, the roots are far less likely to spread out into the surrounding soil. The environment you've created is just too good to move beyond it. So while it may seem counterproductive, trust the fact that your native soil alone is exactly what your plants need to establish quicker and better. So just backfill with a native soil and you'll be glad you did, and so will your tree. You know, perhaps one of the most common reasons that plants die during the first few months up to a year after planting is the failure to provide the proper amount of water until the tree is established. How long does that take? Well, that depends on a lot of different things, but it can take at least several months up to a year and maybe two. But the first thing you wanna do right at the time of planting is to make sure that that root mass gets plenty of water. So you really wanna soak the soil at this point and this is the one time where you're gonna provide a lot of water. Now, a very important step in this process right after planting is to make sure that you have plenty of water going down into the roots, and that's important for a couple reasons. First of all, this tree has just been through a rather stressful situation, and you need enough moisture down in there so the roots have an opportunity to take up that water. And the other thing is, the roots need to be in contact with all of the soil, so the water helps knock out any air pockets that occurred when you started backfilling. So you wanna get all that airspace out of there so the roots are in direct contact with the soil. But this good, moist, saturated soil is very important right off the bat. And then you wanna come back maybe every other day and apply a little more water to make sure that the soil is good and moist. Now, beyond those first couple days, you don't really want it soaking wet. That can actually drown the plant. But how do you know how much water is enough? Well, the way that I do it is called the finger test, and it's probably the most reliable way that I know of, and it's simply sticking your finger into the soil, and if it comes up dirty, there's enough moisture in the soil. But if you put your finger in the soil and it comes up relatively clean, then the soil is too dry and you need to add some water. So the game plan is that you continue to do that every couple days in the absence of rain to keep the soil moist, 
with the goal of eventually backing down to maybe once a week and then checking and keeping an eye on your plant and checking that soil is the best way to make sure that it's getting enough water. Another thing you always want to look for when you're out here is just the health and overall vigor of the tree. If the coloration is good, if the leaves are upright, that's all a good sign. But if you start to see discoloration, maybe the leaves are turning kind of a dull or maybe they're getting yellow or they're getting limp, that could be a sign, a problem. And one of the indicators is there may not be enough water. On the other hand, those are also signs that the soil is too wet. So again, it's back to the finger test and just check it that way. That's really the best way to know. So how long do you keep an eye on the watering situation? Well, it can take several months for sure, up to a year and sometimes even two years. So coming out here and checking the soil periodically is a really good idea. But the most important thing that you can do is just make sure that you're supplementing that proper amount of water until this tree is fully established and it's on its own and you've really backed off. And just keep in mind, more trees die of overwatering than underwatering. So you need to apply the right amount of water without too much. Now there are two more tips I want to share with you to set your trees up for success, especially if you're planting in the fall. First things first, mulch. Mulch is always important no matter when you're planting the tree, but fall is a great time to do your planting. And I like to use shredded leaves for that. There's no shortage of leaves around here and I shred them up with a mower or a leaf shredder. And I'll apply about a two inch layer of this around the base of the tree. And this is so good because it helps hold that moisture in the soil, that's important, reduces the evaporation, it cuts down on the weed pressure, and a number of other things. And I'll just push back a little bit from the trunk. I don't want it right in contact with the trunk. So that's the first thing I'm doing, but this is such a huge thing for the reasons I mentioned. Plus, as the leaves break down, it's helping to improve the soil too. And that's a big plus. Okay, now that other tip, and this really applies to fall. Whenever you have a small tree of a caliper, usually four inches or less, you gotta be careful if you're in deer country. And around here, I am definitely in deer country. Because in the fall, the buck will come along on this soft bark. They're very attracted to this because they wanna rub that fur off their antlers and they also wanna mark their territory. And they're doing that on the trunks of these trees. But the bark is so soft, it scrapes the bark off, potentially killing this tree. And it happens a lot. So whenever I have trees of four inches or less in caliper, a newly planted tree like this, I'm gonna protect it. And an easy way to do that, an inexpensive way, is to just get some of this drainage tubing that you can get at the box store. They come in 10 foot lengths and you can cut it down with a hacksaw or however you wanna do it. But this is really great because it protects this area right here. And then you just take this off later in winter once the bucks move on and you're good to go. So I just use that paint line that's, that comes on the tubing and I use that as my guide to make that cut and then I carefully pull it apart and I put it around the trunk. But do be careful because this plastic tubing is rather stiff and you don't want to harm the bark in the process of trying to protect it. But there you go, that's on there and that's going to do the job of protecting this tree through the winter time. And I'll come back again next year and probably for the next few years and do the same thing. But this tree looks in good shape and I've done everything I need to do at the time of planting. Even properly installed trees and shrubs can suffer from mistakes and damage due to foot traffic or mechanical equipment moving over the root area. That's especially true in landscaping installations and regrading projects where heavy equipment is involved. Even cars and trucks driving over roots. Workers coming and going and moving large equipment may not take care to avoid the newly filled planting hole or that much broader area where the roots expand which extends at least to the drip line and oftentimes far more. Soil compaction makes it difficult for the root zone to get the air and moisture it needs and for roots to spread out. To avoid compaction, limit any activity within the drip line of the tree at a minimum and even farther around the tree if practical. Trees rarely need supplemental nutrients. In fact, native soil typically has all the nutrients a tree needs. So if it's planted properly, those roots are gonna spread far and wide and find all the nutrients they require. The only reliable way to identify a nutrient deficiency is with a soil test. Even then, a soil test may reveal that the problem is not a lack of nutrients, but the pH, the chemical makeup of the soil. If your soil test report recommends supplementing your native soil with more nitrogen fertilizer, consider a slow-release, organically-derived source of nitrogen, such as melorganite. It's non-burning, meaning it won't harm your tree or anything growing around it. You know the benefit of melorganite releasing those nutrients slowly 
is that you have a much longer period of continuous feeding to the tree roots rather than that quick release one and done that's so typical of other fertilizer products. That's not best practices and it shouldn't be yours either. But if you can avoid those five most common mistakes for tree planting and care, you'll be enjoying all the trees under your watch for years to come.